the newer truck drivers will feel a little bit inspired and i think the old school drivers will feel a little bit uh you know without you old school we appreciate y'all so much y'all was not manually restricted y'all did not have elds and y'all had atlases to get you where you needed to be and we would not be where we are without y'all so just know that that's gotta bring a smile to someone's face What's going on, mother truckers? You know, we came out to e Express and just, uh, you know, did a little post and say, hey, drivers, if you had some time, you know, come on out. And I honestly was about to leave. And, you know, Haley came out and said, hey, Alex, I came out to meet you. You know, how are you doing today? <laughs> good, how are you? Good, good, good. And so, you know, we were talking behind the scenes about some of the gripes. You didn't ask about being on video, but I thought, you know, this was a great opportunity to inspire others that want to get into trucking, right? And you said, you just told me a story where I uh, tried to kick you out of the, the trucker's lounge. Tell, tell me that story real quick. What, what did they say? Yeah, so I was, it was actually, I was actually in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, I stopped because I, I was so hungry. And uh, I was like, let me give it some food. And then um, the staff actually came in and I was just chilling, waiting for my shower. And then she comes in and they were like, hey, you can't be here. It's, this is, the lounge is for drivers only. And I was like, oh, I am a driver. I had to show her my CDL with all of my endorsements. I'm not a restricted driver. I, I always have to mention that because I'm all 106 pounds. And I don't think I look like the stereotypical version of what drivers or people think I would look like. And uh, she was like, oh, 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 my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. How does that make you feel when someone kind of kicks you out and tries to kick you out and say, hey, you, you don't belong here. It's only for a truck driver, right? Yeah. Well, I was telling Alex that, you know, um, growing up, my family, they're, vo they're very, uh, they, they value men. And so it's very uncomfortable for them to accept me as like a, a truck driver. I didn't tell them for the longest time because I honestly didn't know how they would feel. But, um, you know, you get thick skin and especially, you know, in trucking school, I went to a manual transmission school. I passed on my first time and actually like they do the alley docking here and my very first time testing, like I got the alley dock, but I passed it, you know, and it was, it was challenging because, you know, you come around in a, you know, you're kind of jackknifed, you don't get to set up properly. But I mean, I think since the beginning, I've been kind of like facing like those little criticisms and I, it just really like, I just shake it off. I'm like, I know like what I'm capable of and I, everybody, you know, we're all human beings. So, you know, like trucking is for some people and you know, it's not for others, but you know, like after I was telling him my story that, um, you know, I went to college or graduated, I was working in a law firm for about five years and uh, I made the switch over to trucking and I haven't regretted it since, you know, um, you know, there's no one like managing me over my shoulder and like having to manage me in person and telling me what to do, you know, like we run our own shows, but at the same time, you know, I do have appreciation for the Mother Trucking channel because, you know, it covers everything from like um, old school type of trucking versus to what we're seeing now with the evolution of the industry. And um, that's what I really love about this channel. And that's why I follow Alex and I had some time off. So I was like, let me come in, let me come and visit because uh, I really, I was inspired by his story. And I'm like, you know, with drivers, we all know what we face out here versus like the corporate people in FMCSA and how they try to dictate and regulate on this industry. But we're the ones that have to face everything at the end of the day with, you know, like the shortage of parking and, um, you know, the, the new, the automated and the EVs and it's like all of our weight limits and how, how is all of that gonna happen and evolve? So, you know, uh, that's what I really appreciate about the channel. Yeah, I appreciate that, you know? And, you know, for someone that wants to get in, cause how long you been driving a truck now? Going on two years. So, you know, um, for anyone that wants to get into this business, you know, there's, there's some that highlight this as a glory. There's others that say, don't do it. I mean, what's the honest truth? Well, who, who's right for this job, you know? Honestly, it's not for the faint of heart. You gotta have like nerves of steel because like I feel like some of these schools they will lie to you and they will tell you that everything's easy, you know. Um, just go up the road and you're gonna find a place to turn around. Like no, this is like for people that can make those tough calls and that are responsible and care about the safety of others. Don't get it into it don't get into it because you think you're gonna make money. Get into it because you know, you want that sense of freedom and independence, but also you know how to run your own show and you're responsible. 
and you know like it's it's a way to create legacy I know that's what it's been for my family because I have a parent that's in that's in trucking and um, you know it's 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 not for everybody but it's for those that I feel like have a more sense of individuality and um, they make calls and a good judgment for themselves I love that you know yeah. and so you know for the people the American people that might watch this that aren't truck drivers uh, what is the biggest problem in trucking right now that you see on a personal level is it you know the regulations is it the truck parking is it the healthy food I mean you know I'm just kind of throwing out ideas for you to think about here yeah I think the biggest issue is you know I was working for a mega carrier and not only is it over starting to be over regulated um, you know you have your safety that sometimes not on your side because realistically you know things do happen and we as drivers have to make those critical judgment calls in the situation and it's like one thing I feel like they do not take in mind is that these people in the office they're not people that have ever driven a truck before at, at times you know sometimes oftentimes really and it's um, you know it's the drivers that we have to have that burden and that that pressure and that weight of making these critical calls for not only um, you know hauling this 80,000 pound missile down the highways you know people cut us off every day you know we have to deal with our tandems and then going in you know stay stay legal we have to run legal in different states you know California you you have a lot of experience in California oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah and then you know versus like going into some someplace different you know um, yeah, that makes sense right uh, don't you love it when they say yeah you can get an easy or they say you know well it says it's only 250 miles yeah. why are you late yeah. you know and yeah, it's New York sure. City or yeah. something oh my gosh you know? yeah and it's like you know people cut us off and you know like things get complicated and we're in the driver's seat so you know, even though these schools, I think the big thing too is mis these schools will misrepresent because they're there for your money. So, you know, you have to keep in mind, you have to be realistic and be realistic with your goals and yourself. You know, if you're in trucking school and the truck rocking back and forth or something and you're manu learning to maneuver and it scares you, that should tell you enough because when you get out here, you know, you're gonna go to places. Like I was just telling him, I hauled a load down to Laredo, Texas and you know, they make it seem like we can get into these places, but it was a it was a tight area to get into, and it was a blindside back, and it was a blindside 90, and um, I was heavy, so you know, like I had to keep pulling up, and I got in there by myself, and there was some people that were so scared that you know they couldn't they couldn't even back in themselves. They asked a guy that another guy from my company to back them in, and he did, you know, and I was like, I'm I'm the only female, like I'm the only person that backed in my truck for myself that day. And, um, you know, like... That's a proud feeling, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, my boss, like, started calling me a proud and little stepchild adopting me and yeah, stuff. So yeah, I was like, I was like, oh, thank you. Because, you know, like, oftentimes, you know, they see little 106-pound me get out. You know, I'm native. Like, they're like, what are you doing here exactly? Yeah. Like, what's going on? I know, I hear that, you know. Yeah. Uh, last question for you, right? Um, what's the best piece of trucking advice you ever received? Oh, my gosh received so many I have like you know I really appreciate talking to older drivers and um, you know the, the, the industry has evolved so much but I would just say you know be adaptable you know um, you know I worked with the old guy he was a marine he was like overcome and adapt so what you got to do girl and I was like okay <laughs> because uh, yeah you know not every situation is gonna be ideal like Alex said you know you go to New York you know, you might go into a place and it's tight and you, your tandems are set crazy and you're hungry for a good meal and you're like on the verge of being, you know, just snapping at somebody and being crabby and, um, you know, just, 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 you know, keep your cool and be adaptable. But also, it's good to be well read and ask those old school truck drivers too. That They've been my greatest resource because not only will they give you advice, but they'll give you a story and you'll like be like, oh yeah, I remember. Like they went over Snoqualmie or Donner's Pass and you know, you'll be like, okay, I better cool out my brakes. I'm not gonna smoke them out or anything. Yeah, no, yeah, good. yeah. so uh, get all your endorsements and um, make sure you're going to a good school because a lot of these schools, you know, they're very, you know, they're there for money and just make sure if you're gonna make the investment, make a good investment on a good school. Okay. No, yeah. I love it, no. Yeah. You know, for someone that said they're kind of shy, you know, you had a lot of information, so. You know, I do appreciate it, and I think a lot of the newer truck drivers will feel a little bit inspired, and I think the old school drivers will feel a little bit, oh uh, you know. Nothing without you, old school. Yeah, we appreciate y'all so much. Y'all was not manually restricted. 
y'all did not have ELDs and y'all had atlases to get you where you needed to be and we would not be where we are without y'all. So just know that. that, that that's got to bring a smile to someone's face. So yeah, no, make sure to follow Haley. You know, again, uh, she came just to say hi and uh, I said, you know what? Uh, your story is great and I thought it'd be great to share. So thank you. No, no thank you. It. No. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good.